the playboy of the western world who is a playboy a heroic figure or a villainous figure we'll come to know hello how are you this is heena from team walat today's play of discussion under british literature i told you already we are wrapping up british literature this week so this is like the second last work related to british literature this is called the playboy of the western world who authored it john millington singh he was an irish playwright okay and because of his feeble health he lived only for 37 years okay he lived from 1871 to 1909 j m singh he was closely associated with abbey theater in dublin where this play was firstly performed the playboy of the western world was first of all performed in abbey theater dublin in 1907 okay the genre of this play is it is a comedy but it arose such serious such serious accusations from irish politicians irish people of that time they told singh you are insulting us you are insulting the irish women by writing such play basically the public was divided somebody who found humor in the playboy of the western world but somebody who hated it but today we revere this play okay why because of its language use of that colloquial irish gaelic language okay now literary period is it belongs to the irish literary revival also called as irish literary renaissance also called as celtic or celtic twilight or gaelic literary period setting of the playboy is it's a county called as county mayo county is basically a district so county mayo in ireland and the playboy of the western world is a play in three acts with this we are very much in a position to start with act 1 first just listen to the names of the characters fast fast christy mahon he is the antagonist of the play old mehon he's christie's papa michael james flaherty is a pub owner in the village margaret or pigeen is his daughter michael's daughter shawn is the lover or i can say the fiance of pigeen widow quinn is a young widow of 30 years old father rayley is like a local priest philly and jimmy they are michael's friends Whereas Sarah, Suzanne, Honor, Nelly, they all are village girls. Okay, Act One is setting in this county Mayo. There is a pub which is like a rundown pub, not in a very good condition. It belongs to Michael Flaherty. It's his pub. Year is in nineteen hundreds. Michael Flaherty is a very robust and a jovial owner of a village pub. His young, beautiful, and attractive daughter is called Pigeen Mike. Begin works as a barmaid in her father's pub and when the play starts you can see that Pigeen is writing something in her diary basically she's preparing for her wedding day she's preparing the guest list other important things who is Pigeen getting married to she's getting married to her second cousin her cousin basically whose name is Sean Ko Sean Ko or Sean Kiog Sean is like this fat and fair guy shown in the play okay and pigeen is so shown as like a daydreamer or a person who always thinks about romantic poets mythological figures related to irish you know history here the theme is nationalism this play is out and out an irish play everything in fact you know singh has said that all the words also that i have used in this play are strictly irish okay so do you understand the start what is pigeen doing she is preparing for her wedding she is writing something in the diary she is about to wed her cousin sean her father's name is michael they own a pub okay now how are pigeen and sean as lovers what is their relationship like although pigeen loves sean she feels that he is a coward he is shy he is extremely god fearing extremely religious okay this way it actually annoys her okay so pigeen definitely loves sean but then she's not very fond of sean also okay now at that same night pigeen's papa michael is going out okay for the whole night and pigeen is so scared to be all alone in the pub because she's scared she tells her fiance sean that please spend the night with me i'm all alone 
Sean, I told you, is extremely God-fearing. They are not married. It is early 1900s. Out of fear and religious anxiety, Sean refuses. Sean says, no, 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 I can't stay with you for the night. Here, theme is religion. The suspense, a character is going to enter the play. Just then, Sean tells Pigeen that while he was coming to the pub, on the way, he heard a sound from a ditch. Uh, he heard a sound from the ditch. What kind of sound did, you know, uh, uh, Sean hear? Groaning wicked, like a maddening dog. When Sean says this, Pigeen is excited. She's like, why did you not stop? Look down in the ditch and see who was it. But Sean is scared. And Pigeen says, you are such a scary, scary person. You know, like sc not scary as in you're always so scared of things and circumstances. Right? Soon the suspense ends when a mysterious looking boy, not in a very good condition, he enters the pub. Everybody gets intrigued as well as scared. This boy introduces himself as Christopher Mahon, the antagonist of the play. Listen, Christopher Mahon. I'm going to call him Christy. Who is Christopher or Christy Mahon? Christy tells Pigeen that he is a runaway from his home. He has run away, escaped from his home. The police, also called as the peeler, is after him. Why? What is the crime that Christy has committed? He has killed his own father. Christy has killed his own father, called as Old Mahon. Here the theme is patricide. When a father is killed by the child, patricide. Christy claims that, you know, he killed his father because his father was a tyrannous figure. His father was vicious. His father was good for nothing. And he pleads for a shelter from Michael. Michael's friends are there. Pigeen is there. And can you imagine, surprisingly, rather than calling Christy a killer, everybody is impressed with Christy. Wow, wow. The people at the bar, that is Pigeen, Michael, Michael's friends, Jimmy and Philly, they are impressed by Piggy, Christy's courage. They tell Christy, what you have done takes a lot of courage. You must have been thrown to the edge because you committed such an act. And then Christy gets confidence. He continues his story. He says that he hit his father on the head with a loy in a potato field. Everybody is amused. You did that? You used a loy to hit your father to kill him? Then Michael is like, I can offer you a job, Christy. Stay here. I'll give you shelter. The job is you have to become a penny pot boy. What is the meaning of penny pot boy? Take care of my daughter at night. While he's away. Who? Michael, the papa. Sean, of course, has all the reasons to get jealous. Because at the start of the play, we came to know Pigeen is going to be all alone. Now, who's going to spend the night with Pigeen? Christy and not Sean. Sean is jealous and Pigeen gets distracted because of Christy. When Christy and Pigeen are all alone, he tries to impress her with beautiful words. The story of his life's difficulty under his late father. Here the theme is the power of words, the power of storytelling. And Pigeen is looking at Christy. She finds him incredibly handsome. And soon the two feel that they have fallen in love already. Pigeen also feels that Christy is this mythological and heroic figure who has committed a great deed by fighting all the obstacles. Theme, heroism. A new character enters the play. Her name is Widow Quinn. Widow Quinn, she's a 30-year-old widow who turned widow by choice because she killed her husband. Just like... Why am I laughing? Oh, God. Remember, Singh wanted it to be a comedy. So I'm just trying to... <laughs> confirm to what Singh wanted. So Widow Quinn, just like Christy, is a murderer. She arrives at the pub on the orders of the priest, that is Father Rayleigh and Sean. She has been ordered that go bring this boy Christy, take him at your house, do not allow him to spend the night with Pigeen in the pub. When she comes, she hears Christy's story. She's instantly impressed. 
She finds a strong connection between them. Both of them are murderers. Both of them are heroic figures. Oh God. And then she tells Christy, you have to come with me to my house. You cannot stay here with Pegin. Pegin is like, how can you take him away from me? Pegin and Widow Quinn fight. They struggle. And Christy finally decides for himself. He says, I can decide for myself. I want to stay at the pub with Pegin. So angrily, dejected, Widow Quinn leaves and Christy gets his bed. He feels so comfortable in his bed. He thinks, why did I not kill my father sooner? I would have got all this sooner. Everybody is liking me for what I have done. <laughs> With this act two is starting of the Playboy of the Western world. The setting is the next morning and the villagers have now come to know about the deed of Christy. Remember, it's a small village. The rumor spreads like wildfire. The news spreads like wildfire. The villagers now want to meet this hero. They want to meet Christy. Just then, four village girls called as Suzanne, Sarah, Honor, and Nellie. They bring gifts. They want to meet Christy. Christy is shy. He goes and hides. The girls find his looking glass. And the girls say, you know, they laugh and say, them that kills their fathers is a vain lot surely. And the girls start laughing. <laughs> Christy is actually now considered courageous, handsome, and the new hero of the village. And of course, then Piggin enters. Widow Quinn is also there. So, you know, Piggin shoes the girls away. Piggin shoes Widow Quinn away. She just wants to stay alone with Christy. Now, what will Shaw do? Shaw is, Shaw wants Piggin. So Shaw tries to make a deal with Christy. When Piggin is out, Shaw, you know, Sean, Sean, sorry, he convinces Christy to leave the village in return for a one-way ferry ticket to America and his best clothes. Basically, Sean tells Christy that if you leave Pegin and go, if you leave my village and go, I'm going to give you a one-way ticket to America. I'm going to give you my best clothes. And very cunningly, Christy takes all the clothes, but he refuses the ticket. He says, I can take your clothes, but I'm not going anywhere. Widow Quinn hatches a plan with Sean for her to marry Christy in exchange for a reward from Sean consisting of a ram, a cow and a right of way across his property. Do you understand? First of all, Sean tries to make a deal with Christy. When that does not work out, Sean tries to make a deal with Widow Quinn. So Widow Quinn says that, okay, you know, I will help you, but then in return, you have to give me something. And Sean says, I'll give you a ram, a cow and a free access to my property. And Widow Quinn says, okay, I am going to distract Christy and make him fall in love with me. Now, a breakthrough in the play is that the papa who was dead till now is not actually dead. Everybody was considering Christy to be a hero because he has killed his father. He has committed patricide. But the truth is, old Mahon, the papa, is not dead. He's very much alive. The loy which hit his head just wounded him, but did not kill him. And just when Christy is enjoying his new stardom, he notices a figure approaching him. It is his father, indeed his father, old Mehon, wounded but not dead. Christy goes and hides. He cannot meet his father at all. And he feels that his father is looking for him. His father is actually looking for him. He shouts out, says, where is my mad son? He's a peasant son. He's a fool. He's a laughing joke of every woman. Where is he? Christy hides. He's scared. Widow Quinn is there. The old Mehon comes and asks, Widow Quinn, have you seen this boy, my son? Widow Quinn plays very, very smartly and says, yeah, I saw this boy. He's gone the other way. Basically, she distracts or she gives a wrong direction to Uncle Mohan. And when Uncle is gone, she goes and tells Christy, your father is very much alive, beta. Tumhare papa to zinda hai. And, you know, Christy pleads to Widow Quinn, please help me, please don't tell anybody my father is alive. So she says, okay, then marry me. Christy says, I can't marry you, I love Begin. Widow Quinn thinks for a while. She says, okay, I will allow you to marry her, but in return, because when you will marry her, the pub will belong to you. In return, Christy, 
you have to give me all the provisions from the pub. I need favors from you when you marry her. So then he agrees. And with this, act three starts. Later, same day. Christy is now earning laurels. Basically, a sports ground is shown. There are a lot of activities there. Christy is trying to be chivalrous, trying to be strong. He's getting medals, laurels. People are so impressed. They call him the boy, you know, of the West, the playboy of the Western world. And just then his father enters. They are, they are still not met each other. His father finds Philly, Jimmy, Michael, Widow Quinn. Everybody's there. He tells everybody that Christy is my son. Where is he? Widow Quinn says, oh, he's a madman. Don't listen to him. But Philly and Jimmy, they want to know the truth. Okay. And because they are so skeptical, they actually discover that, yes, he is the father of Christy. He's not dead. And let me tell you by now, Pigeen has actually convinced her father, Michael, that I will marry Christy and not Sean because your grandchildren will be little gallant swearers and not puny weeds like Sean. That's how, you know, Pigeen convinces her father that I should marry Christy and not Sean. Michael agrees. But now the truth is out. Papa is not dead. Now what? Everybody is present there. Old Mahon runs towards his son, starts beating him. The villagers call Christy an ugly liar out of defense. Christy tries to kill his father again. But Pigeen is scared. The story was good enough. But in reality, seeing a son killing his father is so horrific. Everybody, all the villagers are scared that this will become a police case in their community. They catch Christy. They decide to hang him. They decide to, you know, do their own case against him. And then they take him away to the pub. And Pigeen is furious. Pigeen threatens Christy with fire. And then Christy bites Sean's legs. It's all a mad thing going on. And then Christy is tied with a rope in the pub. Old Mehon enters and insist, give me my son back. He has not killed me. He's my son. Give him back to me. Here the theme is family. Christy is more than happy to live. He knows that he, to leave. He knows that in this village, his life is in danger. He says, yes, Papa, I'm going. Christy still has that confidence in him. He speaks confidently, boastfully, that from, from now onwards, Christy, he is going to be the gallant captain and his father is going to be the heathen slave. Like a hero, Christy seeks everybody's blessings, thanks them for welcoming him, says, quote, he will go romancing through a romping lifetime from this hour to the dawning of the judgment day. And the end of the play is like this. Christy is going. Although Pigeen wanted to hit him, kill him, but now Pigeen laments. She is sad. She looks at Christy going. She throws a shawl over her head and cries for Christy. I've lost him surely. I've lost the only playboy of the Western world. <laughs> what is the meaning of playboy? You should know it. A trickster, an actor, somebody with a playful spirit. You know, the Playboy of the Western World was the sixth play of John Millington Singh. These are important points to ponder. Another is, Singh said himself that there were only one or two words within the play that he had not heard among the country people in Ireland. Basically, Singh spent a lot of time on this island called as Aran Islands, okay, in Ireland, which is like on the west coast of Ireland, called as Aran Islands. So when he stayed with the rural people here, he heard their language, their way of living, their rustic lifestyle. It was only after this that John Millington Singh was inspired to write plays. Okay, but very soon his health deteriorated and he passed away. How did you like it, the playboy of the Western world? If you liked it, what will you do? Of course, you'll comment. You will share this link with your friends and relatives and you will subscribe to our channel Walat by Dr. Kalyani Walat. This is Hina from Team Walat. Take very, very good care of yourself. Bye.